go on and get in your Bibles. You guys can keep on playing. We're going to John, the 11th chapter, starting at the 38th verse. When you get it, say amen. If you need me to hold on, just say, Cam, hold on. But when you get it, I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet. And we're going to read this thing together. Lord, have your way. Hallelujah. 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 We got it. We got it. All right, here we go. And it reads, then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor, for he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this on account of the people standing around that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. Hallelujah. The man who had died came out, his hands and feet bound with linen strips and his face wrapped with cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. Let us pray, God, we come to you right now. Just saying thank you for who you are, Lord. We thank you for waking up this morning, waking us up this morning and starting us on our way, Lord. God, right now, we pray that you just take over this atmosphere right now, Lord God, and allow it to be conducive for your spirit, God. God, remove me, Lord. So that your people won't see me, but they will see you, Lord. Allow this to be a word that won't just stay here in the four walls of this church, oh God. But allow them to be able to take this word outside throughout this week and allow it to carry them as they go forth. We give your name glory and we give your name praise. Come on, somebody lift up a praise right then. Hallelujah. Listen, before you take your seat, I dare you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. It's time to rise again. Oh, come on. I feel like you're talking to the wrong neighbor. Look at your other neighbor and say, neighbor, it is time to rise again. And for everybody in this room that will believe it, I prophesy that when the Lord brings you up this time, that he will bring you up fully restored. I don't know about you, but I need restoration in my life. Listen, so at the beginning of this year, me and Bishop, we've been talking about the year of 2020 would be the year of activation and restoration. And when we were speaking of activation, it wasn't that God was just activating some things, but the Lord was activating our faith. Hallelujah. And he was activating our spiritual gifts in order for his people to walk into everything that he has for us in this time and this season. Now, when we spoke about restoration, we were saying that the Lord was not not only going to restore our finances, he wasn't only going to restore our minds, but he was going to restore us wholly. He was going to restore our families. He was going to restore our marriages. And I came to let you know that a lot of us have been able to experience that in this year. However, there are some of us that have still felt defeat, lack, and loss. And some of you are on the verge of giving up right now. But I came to let you know that we are in a season and a time right now that the Lord is disturbing every Everything that was meant to kill you and take you out. Oh, come on. I just need about five people that received that thing in this room. I came to let you know that he is disturbing everything that the devil sent to kill you. So when we look at this thing, we see that Lazarus, the brother of Martha and Mary, he was dealing with a sickness. And as I was going through my study, I realized that this wasn't a sickness that just came upon him at this time. But this was something that gradually got worse over time. 
I don't know about you, but I feel like a lot of times we get to the place in life where it feels like every time we try to clean ourselves up, every time we try to get right and get in right standing with the Lord, it seems like we come up against some things, some obstacles and some complications. But when I saw this thing, I realized that when I went deeper in my study, they said that this was a type of illness and sickness like pneumonia or the plague. So as I was preparing for today, I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, what is it that you would have for me to say to your people? Because God, if you don't speak, I can't speak. And the Lord said, Cam, let my people know that the consequences of stagnation and complacency is death. I just need a church to talk back to me because I thought I was in a real church on this morning. Because listen, when I went deeper, I realized, and if you know anything about pneumonia, you understand that if you lay on your back long enough, it gives room for fluid and mucus to build up on your lungs. And when the fluid and the mucus begin to get on your lungs, it makes it harder for you to breathe. And as time goes on, it gives it room for bacteria to grow, and it could end fatally. But I came to let you know on this room, just for five people that will believe it, that the funeral has been canceled. Listen, oh. Wait, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Because the reason why it has been canceled is because in this season and in this time, there is nothing that's going to be able to keep you complacent and stuck where you are. Listen, because I realized that as we walked into this new year, there was a thing that we had to see. The only way that we were going to be able to experience the activation and the restoration is if we were able to be um, willing and obedient to the Lord's instructions. So many of us have still been experiencing this lack, this hurt, this pain. It's because that we have not been at the place where we're able to be obedient when it doesn't look like what God said it would be. So what we see is what happened was they went and they told Jesus that Lazarus was going to die. And what we saw was the Lord told them, he said that this, this, this sickness will not be unto death, but it will be for the glory of God. So many of us understand, many of us think to ourselves, well, if the Lord loved him so much, then the Lord would have went then and made sure that he would not die. How many of you understand that the Lord stayed where he was for two days before he went to see Lazarus? Listen, I want you to know on today that the Lord doesn't only works in season, but the Lord works in time. Oh, come on, somebody. And listen, I was having a conversation with one of my friends on yesterday, and they were explaining, well, Cam, the Lord doesn't only works in time, but the the Lord also works out of time. I don't know about you, but as I was growing up, I always heard that he may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. Meaning that the Lord doesn't have to show up when I say he's supposed to show up, but the Lord will show up on time. Listen, I need you to know that in this season and in this time, there are some things that have to die and have to fall away before the Lord elevates you to the place where he's calling you to. And a lot of us don't like to feel the stripping away. A lot of us don't like to feel the separation. A lot of us don't want to hear that we have to get rid of some habits, some people, and some things. But I came to let you know that in this time, in this season, everybody can go where the Lord is taking you to. And listen, I'm not just saying that as another cliche on this morning, but I need you to understand there has to be a falling away. I just need a real church in this room. So listen, what we see is when the Lord finally showed up, what Mary and Martha, they came to the Lord and they said, well, Lord, if you were here before this happened, we know that he wouldn't have died. And then the Lord looked at them and they said, didn't I tell you that if you have faith that I would raise this man? What we have to understand on today is that the Lord doesn't only have his perfect will, but he has his permissive will. Oh, come on. Can I teach the class on this morning? Listen, because what we have to understand is his perfect will is things that he that he causes to happen. His permissive will is things that he allows to happen. Many of us are going through some things right now, and the Lord is allowing you to go through this thing. Because when the miracle hits your life, everybody around you will be able to know that it wasn't nobody but Jesus. Oh, come on, people of God. I need y'all praying with me because the thing is it doesn't matter whether it's his permissive will or his perfect will how many of you know that he will show up in both of them yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
Listen, listen, because the truth of the matter is a lot of us, we have been dealing with sickness. We have been dealing with loss. We have been dealing with lack. But I believe that sometimes we have to go through to come out. There are some things and there are some people that didn't even think that you would come out of the mess that you came out of. Oh, come on, somebody. And at some point, you started to believe that you would never make it out. Because at some point in our life, we get to the place where we are so comfortable in lack. <laughs> we are so comfortable in stress. We are so comfortable being wounded. And we don't even know what wholeness look like anymore. But I came to let you know that the Lord is calling us to be whole and restored in this season. So when we see this thing, we see that the Lord, he went up and he told them, well, didn't I tell you if you have faith that this man would rise again? Well, the Lord, he did. He went over there. He said he told them to move the stone. He commanded them to move the stone. And if we understand that a few chapters before the people were throwing stones at him, <laughs> I mean, come on. So the Lord, I was speaking to the Lord, and the Lord told me to let you guys know that in this season, your words hold weight. This is what I'm saying right here. Because I understand that we all believe that the power of life and death is in our tongue, which is true. But the same way that we are able to speak wholeness, we can speak destruction. I don't know about you, but at some point in our life, we get to the place where, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm so broke. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it. Oh, I feel like I'm dying. But we have to understand that a lot of times when we're speaking, the same way that we can speak blessings, we can speak curses. I speak over everybody in this room right now that as you speak in this season, that the Lord has an army of angels waiting to fight on your behalf. Oh, come on, somebody. Listen, because I came to let you know that the Lord is allowing us to see it happen before it happens. I believe that when you speak right here in this season, that there is a shift that's happening in the heavens. And, and as it happens up there, then he will allow us to see it here in the natural. I just need a few people that believe in the Lord on this morning to stand up on your feet throw your head back and say thank you Jesus that you're allowing me to see it happen before it happened oh come on somebody because I believe that the Lord wants to give us a miracle right here right now so what the Lord told the man to do he said he said Lazarus come out come out and what we have to understand is when he came out he came out with the things all around him everything that he was buried in and I like to say that that was evidence that that was evidence that the miracle happened listen when you come out of this thing and I need somebody to catch this right here when you come out of this thing that the Lord is bringing you out right here in this season the people the same people that thought you would never make it out those are the same people that's going to have to bless you because the Lord is stripping it away right in front of those people oh come on people of God I just need about 10 people to open up your mouth and give him glory right there I just need about 10 people to open up your mouth and give them praise right there because I came to let you know that the Lord has come to free you from some things I don't know about you but I've been at a place in my life where I've had to separate myself from some people I've had to separate myself from some things and some habits even my friends I had to separate myself from some of them because the truth of the matter is the same way that the Lord can send people to you the devil can send people to you as well and I believe that the same way the Lord has a plan for you, the devil has a plan for you. And if you are not able to listen to the Lord's instruction, sometimes we can find ourselves going around in a circle and dealing with the same things over and over again. I just need y'all to speak back to me in this room. So what we have to understand in this place is when he went down, they said he was dead. But when the Lord brought him back up, he was restored. I don't know about you, but I'm in a place in my life that everything that's attached to me is going to be restored. Listen, the devil thought that he could take my mind. He thought he could take my family. He thought he could take my health. Listen, I don't know if you know my testimony, but I was never supposed to be able to walk or talk a day in my life. And by the grace of God, I'm able to stand here and let you know that saith the Lord. I don't know about you, but I'm at a place in my life that there is nothing that the devil can do. There is nothing that he can say that can keep me stuck here in this season. I dare you to look at your neighbor and say the funeral has been canceled. 
Oh, come on, come on. I dare you to look at them and say the funeral has been canceled. So what I said was the Lord is at a place where he's trying to restore his people. He wants us to be healed. He wants us to be whole. But a lot of times we continue to put ourselves in these same situations, these same places, and we find ourselves stagnant. And it's simply because we won't follow the instructions of the Lord. Listen, many of you understand that the Lord told you to open up that business last year, but for you, you felt like it wasn't the right time. Come on, am I speaking to somebody in this room? Does somebody know that the Lord told you to let go of that relationship last year, and you're still holding on to that thing, and you're finding yourself going in circles, going in cycles, because you are afraid of separation. Listen, a lot of us stay in situations because we're fearful. A lot of us stay in situations because we're afraid of being alone, but I came to let somebody know that you are not alone. You're never on your own. And God is always there through everything that you may go through. I just need about five people to go crazy in this room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said I just need about five people, just about five, that understand that he woke you up this morning, that he started you on your way. And I just need somebody to give God glory and give him praise. Yeah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Wait, because I need you to hear this. Because the truth of the matter is the devil thought that he would keep you in the place that you are in forever. Listen, what we have to understand is when we speak things, it's time for us to move. What, what I said at the beginning is when you saw that the people were laid, when, when you have pneumonia and you're laid back and you're set up for a, few, uh, for a period of time, that is when the bacteria begins to grow. That's when the fluid begins to go around your lungs. I came to let somebody know that it's time for you to move in this season. I came to let somebody know that it is time for you to move in this season. And it may not look the way you thought it would look. It may not feel the way you thought it would feel. But I came to let you know that the Lord is with you every step of the way. So when we go back to the scripture, we see that he got there and he waited those two days because what had, what had to happen is there had to be a setup for the miracle. If the Lord would have showed up when they wanted him to show up, then nobody, it, it, it wouldn't have been as great as it was. It still would have been a miracle, but the, what needed to happen was the man had to die first in order for them to see that the Lord would raise him up. Listen, a lot of us are at a place in our life where we feel like things are dying. We feel like we're at a place where things are just being destroyed over around. Every time we turn around, it seems like things are falling away. But I came to let you know that the Lord has come to restore you in this season. Restoration is here. Restoration is here. So what we have to understand is this. I don't know about you, but people ask me all the time, well, Cam, why do you praise the Lord the way that you do? My response is, is that I have no choice. Listen, I haven't only seen the Lord bless me, but I've seen the Lord bless my family. I don't know if y'all, any of you know my mother, my mother, Bishop Sharon Owens Hunter, but there was a time when she was rolling around in a wheelchair. Some of you saw it. And the doctor said that she would never be able to walk again. Listen, I don't know about you, but I know that I serve a God who's a way maker, a miracle worker, and a promise keeper. And I'm at a place in my life that I'm not going to wait till the miracle happen, but I'm going to praise him before it happens. Listen, many of us are at a place where we're waiting for things to turn around. We're waiting for things to happen, and then we want to put our praise on it. But I came to let you know that I want to be in a room with people that are able to praise him before it happens. I need you to know that in this season, and in this time, your praise need to match that prayer. Woo! Woo! Your praise need to match that miracle that you want to see happen. I don't know about you. I don't know about you. But I need somebody in this room that's ready to see the miracle happen right here, right now, right here, right now. Go on and look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, 
If you don't get it, I ain't waiting for you to get it. But I'm at a place in my life that nothing is going to be able to stop me from the thing that the Lord has for me. So don't mind me. For about 10 seconds, I'm about to act like I done lost my mind because I need the Lord to make a way. I need the Lord to set me free. I need the Lord to perform a miracle. I dare you to just praise him right there. I dare you to just praise him right there. I dare you, I dare you, I dare you. I dare you, I dare you. I dare you, I dare you. Hold up, hold up. Because what you don't understand is your praise is your way over in this season. So many of you don't even understand, but you just stepped into a new season. You just stepped into a new season. You just stepped into your miracle. Your miracle is already here for about five people that'll just believe it. I speak right now that the Lord is not only restoring your heart, but the Lord is restoring your family. Everything that your children do will now start to line up with Jesus. Everything that your parents do will start to line up with Jesus. The Lord is going to send you through a season where he has to separate you from some people and separate you from some things. But I came to let you know that it's only by his goodness, only by his power that you will get through this. Somebody say, I'll get through this. Somebody say, I'll get through this. Somebody say, I'll get through this. And when I come out, I may have on my grave clothes. But the same way I came out with my grave clothes, I serve a God that told the grave clothes to unbind me and let me go. Hey! Somebody say, unbind me and let me go. Unbind me and let me go. No longer will I be struggling in my mind. No longer will I struggle with depression. No longer will I struggle with insecurity. No longer will I struggle in lack. I came to let you know that the curse ends with you. came to let you know that the curse ends with you. And listen, and because the curse ends with you, your baby will never feel it. Their baby will never feel it. Their children will never feel it. I came to let you know that the Lord is here to break generational curses. The same thing that your parents dealt with doesn't mean you have to deal with. Come, go, woo, woo, woo. Listen, I speak blessings all over this room. The curse ends with you because it has to end with somebody. It has to end with somebody. The curse of poverty is being broken in this room right now. The curse of lack is being destroyed in this room right now. Your kids won't deal with the same habits that you deal with. Why? Because it ends with you. So when the Lord brings you out of this thing and you're restored, your whole family is restored. <laughs> Woo! I just need five people to believe it and put a praise on it right there. I dare you to seal that with the praise. I dare you to seal it with the praise. I dare you to seal it with the praise. Listen, because the reason why the curse ends with you, because after today, you will start to walk into the thing that the Lord has told you to walk into. No longer in this season will you keep yourself stuck. It ain't always the devil, baby. Sometimes you're keeping yourself in the same place. 
what you have to understand is it may be the Lord's permissive will that you're going through the thing that you're going through, but it is his perfect will that he shows up right on time and restores you when you feel like it's too much that you can bear. And in both, he shows up. <laughs> Woo! No longer will we ask the Lord to give us our breakthrough. No longer will we ask him, will we ask him to give us our miracle, our way out and our way over. And still we sit back and just wait for him to do it. But I'm at a place in my life that as I pray, I'm going to work as well. As I have faith, I'm going to work as well. Because what you have to understand is it's already done. He's already done it. Now you have to walk into what it is that the Lord has for you. Come on, people of God. Look at your neighbor and say, it's time to rise again. Say, it's time to rise again. Listen, there were some things that the devil thought he was going to make sure that you go through all of those same things throughout this year. But I speak that it ends today. If you receive that, I dare you to just wave your hands right there. I speak that it ends right here, right now, today. There are some people in this room that have been struggling in your mind. And we break that right now in the name of Jesus. The Lord didn't give me the, fear, the spirit of fear. He never did that. <laughs> he never did that. In this season, I decree and I declare that tonight you will sleep better than you did last night. Let me tell you why. Because now that you understand, now you understand that in order for you to experience the restoration and the activation in this season, you have to be obedient to the voice of the Lord. I encourage you in this season to understand that there is a lesson to everything that you may be going through right now. And the truth of the matter is, the lesson isn't even always for you, but sometimes it's for the people around you. The people around Lazarus had to see the miracle. I don't know about you, but sometimes we can be around people that doubt the words that we speak. And a lot of times if we're trying to move forward in God and we're surrounded by a bunch of doubters, then we start to doubt ourselves. I came to let you know that the miracle that the Lord is about to make happen in your life, he's making it happen around people around you so that they will believe as well. It's not always for you. <laughs> Woo! And what we have to understand is we have to get at a place in our life where it's like, Lord, I don't know how. I don't know when, but I know that you're going to do it. I just need about 10 people in this room that understands that the Lord is going to do it. He's going to do it. Can we just lift up our hands all over this room and begin to worship him right there? The funeral has been canceled. You hear that, Deshanel? The funeral has been canceled. Everything that the devil tried to keep you stuck. <laughs> we send him back to the pits of hell where he came from because the funeral has been canceled. But some of the things that the Lord has separated you from, he had to separate you in order for you to go into this next place. Don't grow weary. Don't grow weary. Separation is necessary. need you to understand that at some time in our life we have to go through a pruning season and when we go through a pruning season that means that the Lord is taking away some things in order to grow new things I dare somebody to just understand that in this season because the Lord has served a disruption between everything that was meant to kill you now you're able to move forward in everything that he has for you. Does anybody receive that in this room? Yeah. 
Hallelujah, Jesus. Woo! Hallelujah, Jesus. I speak peace in your mind right now. to just sit here and rest in his presence right there. God, we come to worship you. God, we come to give you praise. God, we worship you, Jesus. And as you rise, your family will rise with you. I speak right now that in this season, your business will flourish. a place and I can speak for myself the truth of the matter is you have to understand that every time you have a strong calling on your life the same way the Lord has some things that he needs you to accomplish the devil has some things that he needs you to accomplish I need you in this season and in this moment to sober up your minds and your hearts so that when the Lord speaks, you'll be able to hear him clear. I believe that the Lord is lifting up a generation of leaders that's able to hear him clearer than generations before. What we have to do is be able to consecrate our minds and our hearts because the Lord is giving us instructions in this season. Yeah. Hallelujah, Jesus. So as the Lord has commanded that the stone roll away and he told Lazarus to come out. I speak right now that the Lord is even rolling away the stones that the people use to bury you. The dirt, everything that the devil used to keep you bound and stuck being rolled away right now I need you to accept your freedom in this room <laughs> somebody shout freedom all over this room oh come on I need y'all to shout it like you mean it shout freedom all over this room freedom in your mind freedom in your finances freedom in your heart freedom in your soul freedom so understand I'm done but understand that you are at a place in a time where your life depends on the instructions of the Lord I believe that the Lord has a miracle for us but I also believe that if we fall into our flesh we can miss our miracle y'all don't like to hear that and I also believe that if I miss my miracle there's no reason for me to sit up and throw a pity party and act like the Lord isn't who he said he is. But it was because of me that I missed my miracle. I speak right now that in this season, you won't miss a thing that the Lord has for you. Can I, can I pray? Can I pray? Can we lift up our hands all over this room? I dare, I dare everybody to open up your mouth and start telling God what he is to you. Come on. Come on, come on, lift up, a, lift up a sound in this room. Lift up your voice in this room. Lift it up, lift it up, lift it up. <clears throat> Father God in heaven, we come right now and we say thank you. Woo. Thank you for loving us the way that you do, oh God. Thank you for keeping us the way that you do, oh God. We thank you right now that as we walk out of this room, we'll walk out fully restored. No 
longer in lack, no longer in bondage, no longer in fear. But restoration is mine today because I'm connected to you. So I speak right now in this season that as I go and I speak the words that I need you to do in my life, I speak that you already have an army of angels working on my behalf. Every time the devil comes to try to stop the thing that you have for me, you will set up a standard against it. I speak right now that your people, everyone that's under the sound of my voice, is going to be okay with the falling away of some things. They're going to be all right with the separation of some things. Because we know that rather it's your perfect will or your permissive will, you are in it.